Right, let's get rid of that picture first. Blonde wasn't for me. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Charlotte Whittle. I'm an independent consultant with Arbonne at the level of Executive National Vice President. <laughs> Not quite yet. But that is something that I have told myself over and over again since I was first introduced to this opportunity. In reality, at present, I'm the Regional Vice President with the amazing Whittle Region, who are over there somewhere. My team are amazing, and I know that everyone says this, but I love you all so much, and I would not be here today if it wasn't for you. So, I love being a Regional Vice President, but it's absolutely not where I'm supposed to be forever. This is just a step on my journey. I know, and I have always known, that I will be a 50-wide, a 100-wide Executive National Vice President. <laughs> Arbon is absolutely where I'm supposed to be. I am in this for life. Ella is right, I love Arbon. I want to talk to you all today about having a no matter what approach to your business. I want to get really clear with you on what you can create regardless of your circumstances and your situation. But you've got to believe that it's possible for you. And I think if you're truly honest with yourselves, there's only a small percentage of you in here today that actually believe that you are an Executive National Vice President. I think and I honestly believe that most of you see Arburn as a really nice idea, as something that you would love to do one day when you've got a bit more time, when the kids are a bit older, when you're not working as much, when your husband's not as busy, when you've built the house, bought the house, been on holiday, done all of the things that you're going to do, and then you're going to do Arbonne. I truly believe that most of you see Arbonne as something in your future, but not right now. You come to conferences like this because you absolutely want to grow your belief. You tell yourself that you're being committed to your business, and then you go home and nothing changes because you don't see this as something that you've got to take action on right now. From day one, when I was introduced to Arbonne, I knew that I was all in. I'm going to tell you my story now, and I want you to understand what my life looked like just before Arbonne and for the two years that I was first building my business. I'm not telling you this because it's a nice story. I'm telling you it because I want you to see that anybody can do this. I tell you this so you see what's possible, so that you stop making excuses about why you can't do it right now. I tell you because I want you to decide. I want you to choose to be brave enough to make this work, because you have to do. You don't get to decide to keep this to yourself. It's too precious of a gift to let your fears and your lives get in the way. So, here's my family. When I started building my Arbonne business, I was coming to the end of five years part-time studying. I was a full-time child protection social worker, and that was where I thought I was supposed to be. I absolutely believe that my purpose on, my, uh, my purpose on this planet is to help people be the best possible versions of themselves. I want to help people have a better quality of life, and I thought that social work was the way that I was going to do that. I'd worked for Bolton Council since I was 18. They put me through my studies. And when I finished, I was guaranteed a job managing a team. And this was huge for someone of my age. But they saw my passion, they saw my enthusiasm, they saw my belief. But the reality was I was stuck. I was stuck because my life was changing. I'd met my husband, Carl, and we got married in 2010. And then a year later, we had our son, Louis. This is him on his holidays recently. <laughs> and then followed by our daughter, Phoebe, 16 months later. After having Phoebe, we went home and we started life as a family of four until two weeks later when Phoebe was admitted to hospital. That was our first hospital admission of what was set to be a few years of in and out of hospital. Phoebe was initially diagnosed with pneumonia and she was sent home. She started to recover, but then at four weeks old, Phoebe stopped breathing. She was unable to breathe unassisted. She was put on a ventilator. She was diagnosed with the rarest congenital heart defect that there is. 
she was blue lighted to Alder Hair Children's Hospital, where she underwent emergency open heart surgery. In that moment, I didn't know if I was going to get to stay as a mum of two. I didn't know if that beautiful, strong, wonderful little girl would be mine forever. I didn't know. I'd seen my best friend three years earlier lose her son to leukemia. And I knew he was four. I knew it didn't matter how much you love your children. They can be taken away in a moment. I understood that it was irrelevant. So they took her into surgery, and 11 hours later, she came out, and this is what we saw. In that moment, your life changes forever. Whether you like it or not, you have a choice. You've got a choice whether you fall into the mode of being a victim or whether you step up. On autopilot, I stepped up, and I was the mum that she needed me to be. On autopilot, I stepped up, and I was there for every conversation, every medical decision that was made. Over the next 12 months, I was the most qualified doctor in that room. She was fed through a tube. I juggled my 16-month-old son. My husband juggled his business, which was the only thing paying our wages at that point. We made it work for 12 months, and then eventually, miraculously, somehow Phoebe was well enough to go to nursery. <laughs> I had the prospect of returning to work. And when I did, I was completely overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed by the prospect of leaving these two children every single day. She is not here for me to leave her. Can't look at Stian at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was trying to like, grasp back at some semblance of what was me before this had happened. I honestly think I had post-traumatic stress. I was probably on the verge of a, ne a nervous breakdown, if we're honest. But I'm a doer, so I just kept on doing. I didn't know what else to do. Until one day, I was sat crying in my mum's kitchen, and she suggested that we went along to now Executive Regional Vice President Joanne Geddes' house. <laughs> because she was launching her Arbonne business. I'd heard of Arbonne before. There was absolutely no way I was going to be selling lipstick. I was still at university part-time, I was working 60 hours a week, and my daughter was in and out of hospital. I thought they were both insane. Until I sat and I listened to Executive National Vice President Yvonne Dixon share what this was. And it was like she smacked me around the face. I couldn't explain it, but I knew that I was all in. I didn't know what it was, but I knew if people like that were making this work, then it was something that I needed to be part of. There was something inside me stro so strong saying, you've got to do this. So when I talk about being all in, I was all in from then. I didn't know what this was, but I knew that it was the vehicle to change my life. I have no idea how Arbonne was shared with you, how you came to hear about it, but have you got really clear on how this could be a vehicle to change your life. Maybe your life doesn't look like mine. Maybe you're not on your knees, broken, praying for something to come along. Maybe right now your life looks wonderful. But have you ever wondered why Arbonne is in your life? Because most people that I know start this as a plan B, as a someday, maybe one day. But, you can't be a consultant earning £50 a month when that thing goes wrong. You have to get clear on how big you've got to build this. You've got to build it to a considerable point so that it can replace your income should you need it. That is what this is. But it's network marketing. So you've got to decide to get to work. Oh, wrong, sorry. In The Compound Effect, Darren Hardy talks about all the small decisions that we make and how they either move us forwards or they keep us stuck or sometimes even move us backwards. I love The Compound Effect because it's so simple. The small decisions that we make every single day can move us forward with our business. It's not hard. You are making it hard. 
every time you choose to fill your head with reasons why this isn't possible for you, you're making it hard. If I can make this work, then you can make this work. This is my husband. <laughs> when I said yes to Arbonne, I was working full time. I had no time whatsoever to fit this in. I was still at university. My husband was working incredibly long hours on his own business. There were a lot of arguments. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that that was the case. Yes, no, my husband is one of the most supportive humans on the planet, but back then, he was just trying to survive, and I was throwing in more things that made our life more complicated. I hadn't done any personal development, and his thoughts on whether or not I should be doing this, in my opinion, he was just blocking me. He was stopping me from moving forward, and I used to get so mad. But thankfully, because of personal development, I grew. And I understood that he was scared. He was scared for me, he was scared for himself, and he was scared for our children. There wasn't time in our lives to fit something like Arbon in. So I got smart. I had to get really smart, and I want to let you all know now that regardless of the job that you do, you can choose to fit Arbon in. But you're going to have to do personal development. And by the way, that's not income producing, that's on top of it. Um, you've got to do personal development because you've got to equip yourself with the mental resilience to keep going even when you're tired. So I used to drop product samples off on my way to work. I'd meet people at lunchtime. I had to get really clear with my boss that I was taking a lunch. As a social worker, like, lunch is the most ridiculous concept ever. <laughs> um, but I started to say, I'm taking a lunch because my Arbonne business is important. I'd go out, I'd have one-to-ones, I'd drop samples off, I'd do the same thing on my way home, and then I'd pick the children up from nursery, I'd give them dinner, I'd bath them, and then I'd hand them over to Carl, and I would go out, I'd do Discover Arbonne's workshops, launches, I did whatever it took. I was tired. I was so tired. It was hard, but there was something inside me saying if I kept going, it would get easier and it would get better. You see today, I'm stood on this stage as a regional vice president. What you don't see is all those little decisions that I made over and over again for three years and all the ones I will continue to make for the rest of my life. People don't understand what it takes. In reality, what we do isn't brain surgery. We're not doing open heart surgery. What we're doing is sharing amazing, world-class products and an amazing opportunity. We're recommending and selling these products every single day, and all you've got to do is choose to show up as your best self every time you do that. After AAC last year, and my beautiful friend Lucy Bardrick's incredible training, whoop, I started to get clear with my affirmations on what I was attracting into my business. So I attract confident, focused, committed, driven, independent business builders into my organization every single day. Woo, yes, they're there. <laughs> this is an affirmation that I've said over and over again to myself through the last year. I got clear, I got really clear on what it was that I needed to attract into my business, and then I went to work on growing into the type of person that could attract that. So this is what you've got to do. You need to get so clear on who you need to become to be able to attract those people. Because if you're being flaky, if you're making excuses, if you're not doing what you said you were going to do, no one wants to follow that. No one's going to do business with someone like that. You've got to make a decision today that, yes, this is going to take work. Life is going to get a bit harder once you decide to commit to Arbonne than it was when you weren't. It might already be difficult, which might be the reason why you've said yes to Arbonne. But in order for it to get better, it has to get a bit harder first. Because you're going to have to start making the difficult choices. When you do personal development, you need to commit to studying personal development. So not just reading 10 pages a day because your sponsor told you to. 
You need to commit to implementing personal development into your life on a consistent basis. Carl, I know, has got pictures everywhere of me with asleep, asleep with books on my head. I once smashed myself in the face with the iPad at one o'clock in the morning falling asleep. The reality is, this is not pretty. <laughs> but from being here last year at AAC and listening to Lucy Bardrick and my other friend Nicola Wills train, I decided, like, I really decided that this was it. There was no going back. We were going to be a region. In September 2015, we did 21,000 QVs. And in October, we went into region qualification with 42,000 QVs. <laughs> I don't do things by half. <laughs> so mid-October, naturally, I moved my family an hour and a half away from my team. I had no Wi-Fi, no phone signal, and I was settling my four-year-old into a new school, and my three-year-old was with me all the time, and the only person I knew was my best friend, Laura Mills, who wasn't even doing our bomb. But I knew, I was certain that this would happen. So, at the end of October, I went into Mercedes-Benz. We still weren't quite in region qual. I didn't tell my husband what I was doing, but I went in anywhere, and I ordered my ML. I told them that I would be a regional vice president by the 30th of November and that I wanted to pick my car up on that day. I signed the papers. Well, no, I didn't. I got off my chair, I jumped up and down and went, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. Then I sat down, took a deep breath and signed the papers. They both thought I was bonkers. So <laughs> I committed to doing what it would take to get that car because my team deserved it. My team deserved the evidence that this worked, and I wanted to be that evidence. I committed because I know, and you know, that the things that we need to do are not actually that hard. We have the best products on the planet. We have the best opportunity, and in my opinion, in the UK, we have the best leaders. <laughs> yes. The evidence is all around... Oh, the evidence is all around us. So why are we choosing to play small? We've got everything that it takes to make this work. I just knew that if I trusted the process, I trusted that if I did it, the, the things I needed to do over and over again, then it would all be fine. In reality, you grow to region. You're coached to region. And I couldn't have made this happen without the support of my mom, who's my sponsor who believed in me when I didn't and would never, ever let my stories get in the way of just getting out there and getting on with it. So who have you got in your life that you can be accountable to that's going to kick you in the bum when you need it? On the 30th of November 2015, we became the Whittle Region. We sailed into completing at 7 p.m. and I can't tell you how happy I felt and if I'm honest, a little bit relieved. I want you all to understand that becoming a region is not a solo effort. Becoming a region is about a team. I am absolutely honored to work with some smart, independent, savvy men and women. We are an army of mummies, wives, husbands, police officers, social workers, solicitors, nurses, and dreamers. They've all got crazy busy lives. They all could have a million excuses. Why not? Why they can't do our bomb? But I hope that I inspire them to keep going. I pray that they see that for me, this was worth it. I want to let you all know, and I don't want this to sound any different than it just comes out as, my team make me a better person. Because of you, I choose to get up and show up every single day. The gratitude that I feel for them is unreal. The reality is I would never dream of going anywhere because I like myself best when I am with you. Building to region and beyond is a <laughs> Building to region and beyond is about accepting chaos. It's about being out of balance and being okay with it. There's a myth out there that I'm intent on busting that balance and the secret of, so, no. Sometimes my brain goes faster than my voice. <laughs> so there's a myth out there, and I'm intent on busting it. There is no, no such thing as balance. Hetty touched on it. 
When you're building a business like this alongside everything else you're doing, you're going to be out of balance. Being successful at this is about accepting the chaos, embracing the tiredness, you're going to miss out on social events, girls' nights, maybe even bedtimes with your kids sometimes. When you hear leaders talk about a decision, it's not just about deciding that you want to take this business to the next level. It's about really looking at the impact that this is going to have on your life for a period of time and deciding it's worth it. That's the decision. And then you've got to throw away your excuses, shut the back door and get to work. So I've decided we are going to be a nation. And the way that my brain works is this. Once I've decided something, I will do whatever it takes to make that happen. And that's what you've got to do. Write it down. Where will you be on the 30th of November 2016? I left here September last year, and by November I was a region. You can explode your business if you choose to. What's your team going to look like? What will your income be like? What type of person will you be? Will you be the person that played all out, that showed up big? I do that because my children are watching me. My children see that mommy says she's going to do something, and she goes out there and she goes for it. I don't ever want them to be half in with anything. I want them to be all in. People are watching you. You are a trailblazer. You said yes to Arbonne because you saw what was possible. But every time you don't follow through, you give all those people that doubt this the permission to say, well, it doesn't work. Arbonne does work. So make the decision, write it down now, and know that I believe in you. I know what's possible, but I also know what this takes. You're going to have to scream your affirmations. You're going to have to get out there when you don't want to. I know that because there have been days where I've cried on the floor because it's felt so hard, but Arbonne isn't hard. You just choose to make it hard every single time you say no to what you said you were going to do. So here's the thing. Every single day from now until November, you need to ask two people to look at the opportunity. You need to keep adding people to your list and you need to keep growing. Every single day you need to choose to badass this, to step into your superpower and to move your business forward. You can't not. Whenever I come to a big event like this, I know that I've invested my time, my money, I've chosen to leave my children to come here. So you're damn sure that when I go home, I'm going to leave them again. And I'm going to leave them and leave them until one day I don't have to leave them anymore. Don't return from this and... Don't keep clapping. Don't return from here and slip back into the coziness of your comfort zone. I come home from something like this, stretched and ready to go. You are the change in your business and your life. You have to know that your energy is enough to take a whole team down, but it's also enough to build a whole team up. I'm coming to the end of my training now, and I just want to say thank you to every single person that's given me this opportunity today. I want my team to know that I love you more than you will ever know. I am more grateful for you than you will ever know. It is the 30th of November 2016 and I am a National Vice President with Arbonne. I am a star reacher, a trailblazer, a true transformer and so are you. Have an amazing rest of the conference and thank you.